This is my mom's famous four ingredient artichoke dip. To make my mom's artichoke dip, one of my mom's absolute holiday staples, all you're gonna need is one cup of mayo, one cup of Parmesan cheese, a good can of artichoke hearts, and a half cup of sour cream. First step, chop the artichoke hearts. Now, if my voice sounds a little off, it's because I've been sick for the last five days. I guess the whole year caught up to me all at once, so I apologize. We just wanna pour that artichoke can into a strainer, take some paper towel, and just sort of squeeze any of the moisture out. We don't want that moisture leaching into our sour cream and mayo mixture. Then we can place it onto a board and we just want to chop it. And we're going to chop it not to a fine mince, but I want to break up all of the artichoke. I want to have it nicely chopped so it distributes nicely into the dip. So now that we have that, we can add in our one cup of mayo into the bowl. Next, a half cup of the sour cream, and I can just eyeball it in that cup measure. The original recipe actually only had mayo in it, but my brother changed it, added a little bit of sour cream, and it just adds an added creaminess to it that everyone seemed to like better. So it went from three to four, but it's still a very affordable, minimal recipe to make on a holiday. And then, of course, about a cup of Parmigiano Reggiano grated. And I'm gonna add about a cup and then reserve some of the cheese for sprinkling on top. Also gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And then just mix it all together until it's thoroughly combined and creamy. Now you're gonna need some sort of baking round, some ceramic. I'm gonna put that on a sheet tray. I'm gonna add the dip right into it. We're gonna bake it into this and serve it right in the vessel we bake it in. Level out the top and then finish it with a nice layer of Parmigiano Reggiano. Now this is ready to bake. And I have now just turned on the stove to 350 degrees and we have to let that preheat. And while it does, I can prepare what I'm calling the hors d'oeuvre board. Basically, at the holidays, I got a dip, I've got my stromboli, I've got cheese platters, all this stuff taking up a lot of space when many people don't really have a ton of it. So my idea is to just take all the hors d'oeuvres you're going to serve, put it on one board, and we're gonna take our dip. Maybe you're gonna make my bacon onion dip that I have in my holiday plan of attack, linked down in the description. But you're gonna use a hot dip as the centerpiece, some fresh bread around it. Then you start to build a meat and cheese board with nuts, honeys, all those little goodies, crackers, and then say you even make a stromboli like we made last episode. You can then start to build in the wedges of stromboli all around and you've got everything you're going to serve while guests are arriving or hanging out in one platter, saving room and space. Now cooking during the holidays, you make a mess. And that's why we're taking a little cleaning break thanks to our sponsor today, Blue Land. With Blue Land, all you need to clean your house is this nickel-sized tablet. Blue Land's cleaning products are effective, convenient, affordable, and sourced from clean ingredients. Blue Land uses no single-use plastic in any component, and all refills are 100% plastic-free. Blue Land is also EPA Safer Choice certified, which means EPA scientists have evaluated every single ingredient in the product to make sure it meets Safer Choice's stringent criteria. And the best part is that Blue Land saves you money. Traditional cleaners and soaps usually charge about five to six dollars a bottle, which of course you eventually just throw out. Blue Land's refillable tablets start at $2.25. And then when you buy the bottles, you use them forever. And the quality is great. Here's how it works. You fill your forever bottle with warm to hot water. Drop one of the tablets into the water bottle. Once the tablet fully dissolves, put the nozzle on and within minutes, you're ready to use. No shaking or stirring needed. And your kit comes with everything you need from glass and mirror cleaners, multi-surface cleaners, bathroom cleaners, hand soap, and of course, dishwasher soap. Blue Land offers everything you need to replace your cleaning gear with clean products. And best of all, I'm gonna save you even more. All you gotta do is click the link down in the description to get 15% off your first kit. It's a no-brainer. Now's your chance to start cleaning your house with clean products. Let's jump back into the recipe. So I'm just gonna slice up some bread first. So you just wanna place the dip into the center of the board and then surround the bowl with those pieces of bread to create almost a mold for the dip on the board. So now that we have our mold set, I'll pull it out, get it back on the baking tray, and when the oven's ready to go, I can throw it in there and then begin to build my cheese board around it. And the oven's hot, so I'm gonna throw it in that 350 degree oven. Now we're gonna bake that 
for 35 minutes and then give it a check. We're just looking till it's bubbly and golden brown. So now the idea here is gonna use about three cheeses, about three meats, and we're just gonna be a little thoughtful about it. I've got an aged cheddar. I always like to have like one cheese that's aged, particularly a cheddar because I just like that. And this is a sweet red grass cheddar, it's one of my favorites. Next you got a soft cheese. I'm going with a local Hudson Valley Camembert, one of my favorites. And then we have this goat cheese Humboldt Fog. Now to you, this might look like blue cheese, but it is not blue cheese. It's goat cheese. And that line running through it is not necessarily mold. That is a flavorless, odorless vegetable ash. It's meant to sort of help create this rind on the outside. And goat cheese is a little acidic, so the ash balances it out. It is a spectacular cheese. Don't let the look of it fool you if you don't like blue cheese. You should give this a try. Now I need to prep the cheeses. For the cheddar, I'm gonna cut that block in half and then just cut these little triangles out of each of those little blocks. Next for the camembert, it comes in a little square, so I'm gonna cut it in half and then cut those halves into little triangles as well. And then for the Humboldt Fog, we're just gonna give it a cut in half. And to place them, you know, you don't have to really be super artistic, but you are sort of being abstract in the way that you place these things. Thinking about color, alternating color, spacing them out so that you can then place other things in between. Next up, the three meats. We've got prosciutto di parma, sliced very thin, some salami, and some spicy soppressata. Now, same idea for the meat. I'm just gonna start to gently lay pieces of meat in little groups, spaced out similarly to the cheese. I'm gonna start with the prosciutto, and then I can move into the salamis. And I'm just gonna fold them in these little patterns and cradle them in these little nooks I find on the board. And to fold them, you just fold one in half, and then you fold that half again, pinch them by their little narrow points, and then you place a bundle of those wherever you see fit. It's also why you want to get those meats sliced very thin because it makes for folding them like this and creating this beautiful presentation a lot easier. Once your meats are placed on the board, then we can place in our little honeys and jams. I have a nice little truffle honey here, a light honey, and I'm gonna pair that with a little fig jam. That's one of my favorites. And then we can take some nuts. I've got some roasted salted almonds. You can add some caramelized pecans, whatever you have. Again, scatter little bits around the board. Next, I'm gonna take some raincoat crackers. These are some of my favorite crackers. I'm gonna just sort of scatter them around as well, along with some grissini sticks. These are delicious. You can wrap prosciutto around them. I love having them on a cheese board. Now, I love some red grape on there. So I'm gonna cut some red grapes and I'm just gonna sort of border the whole board with those. And then we can sort of finish it up with a little greenery. So I take some nice, beautiful, fresh thyme and just sort of place them all around the board. Now it's been 35 minutes and the artichoke dip is bubbly and beautifully browned. We can take it out, place it in the center of the board where we set our mold. And then this beautiful, festive, inviting board is ready to serve all your guests. And with a board like this, eating it is just fun. That tastes like Christmas to me. Now, do you see the sort of fun that you could have? Maybe I take a little piece of cheddar over here, take a little almond, take a little prosciutto, and just sort of make a little meat hammer with it. You could hit it with a little bit of honey, a little truffle honey. You could give it a dip into the artichoke dip. It's a fun little build-it-yourself kind of board with all the goodies on it. You can change the meats, the cheeses, whatever you want, but it's just sort of a framework for me to present all of the hors d'oeuvres in a more compact way. This recipe is gonna be in my holiday plan of attack, link down in the description. The ebook that just covers all of my family's recipes in one convenient place. And it helps me pay for some of the people who help me throughout the year. And this is my last recipe of the year. I need to go somewhere and chill the fuck out. I will see you around the beginning to middle of January. And I can't wait to start 2024 with you guys. I wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. <laughs>